everyone. After partying with the Red and the Black Dragonflight on the waking shores, it is time to take our adventure into the Onarn Plains. The area is named after the wild god Onara, the one who led the Maruk Centaur here to begin with. The name might sound familiar to hunters or adventurers that have played during the Expansion Legion. We've seen the wild god within High Mountain, and they were the ones who blessed the hunter artifact called the Eagle Spear, after they were saved by Moran High Mountain from an attack by fire elementals. Not the last time that Onara would get into trouble with the elements, nor the last time that he interacted with the Mortars of Azeroth, as they were the ones who guided the Maruk to these lands. We're talking ancient history here, over 10,000 years ago, where the centaur Maruk earned himself the name Thousand Bones by creating a pile of demon corpses 1,000 strong during that War of the Ancients. Not without taking hits himself, of course. He returned to his clan, limping and wounded, wanted to heal within his home, but the other saw Maruk as too strong a warrior to live. They spread rumors that his wounds left him too weak to lead, and then sent assassins in the night to murder him in his sleep. Thankfully, his partner Tira, the guide mother, took up her bow and slayed the assassins. She then charged into the tents of the other clan leaders, claiming their cowardly heads, as they were, in turn, too weak to lead. With the sun's rising, Tira exposed his treachery against Maruk, and then they set off, left behind the other centaur to forge a new path for the future. Behind them formed a brand new clan, inspired by their honor. While the other centaur would presumably hunt themselves to extinction, these Maruk centaur would be guided by Onara to the so-called Dragon Isles. Once he saw that his people had a new home, Maruk was at peace. The infection in his wounds finally took him. His spirit guided to the sky by his people's chanting. They took his name upon themselves and then turned to Tira for direction, who led them with strength, solidifying the centaur's hold upon these lands, even striking a deal with the green dragons. At first, the green dragons were hostile and territorial towards them. Tira protected the people, slew any creature that threatened their villages. Soon enough, there was a great confrontation with the dragons. Marifra, daughter of Ysera, flew to fight the centaur, and Tira met her bravely in battle. With a great, powerful blow, Tira knocked Marifra out of the sky, and their fight raged across the grasslands, pushing up hills and hollowing riverbeds. Neither could fully vanquish the other, and when they were utterly exhausted and vulnerable, the proto-dragon struck. If they had kept on fighting each other, then both would have fallen, so centaur and dragon... Tira and Marifra ended their fight, turned to battle the proto-dragons together. With their combined might, they emerged victorious. And then, they met upon the hill named Drusal, where they made their pact. They vowed that the centaur would come to the aid of the green dragons whenever it was needed, and the green dragons would do the same for the Maruk. No more would they hunt each other. As a symbol of that vow, there stands the Horn of Drusal, built by Tira herself and blessed by Onara. It's the Maruk's most sacred relic, guarded by Clan Tirai, but never have they needed to blow it. Then, the dragons left the Isles, and now, after 10,000 years, they have returned. So for all this time, the centaur have been on the Dragon Isles, which is interesting considering the origin that we knew about them. The centaur that we knew, they came forth out of a forbidden union between Princess Feradras and Zetar, son of Cenarius. That's the major story given within Desolus and Marauden. But that all happened way after the War of the Ancients, so way after the Dragon Isles were locked away. How can it be then that there are centaur on the Dragon Isles? And turns out that the centaur we know from Desolus, they were a reintroduction through magical means. The Maruk centaur and others that existed during the War of the Ancients. They were there first. Similar to how they were already torn or trolls, the Maruk centaur have survived those days as they migrated to the Dragon Isles, while the other centaur, as far as we know, they've hunted each other to extinction. Then, the union of the princess and the son, that brought them back in a different way, so they haven't changed that storyline, they've just added that there were centaur before their union. So a little bit different, but not massively, and at least we got an explanation. So the modern day Maruk, they are divided in different clans, with the four most powerful ones being Clan Tirai, Shikar, Onir, and Nokut. Clan Tirai, they're the keepers of their traditions. Their leader, the Kanamatra, can trace the bloodline back all the way to Tira. Clan Shikar are the strongest hunters, with camps spread throughout the plains, following the patterns of wildlife and game. Clan Onir have the strong connection to the wild god Onara, 
Their mystics can come from any of the clans, as long as they follow the call of Onara to serve their people. And then there's Clan Nokut, who has only recently come to power. A generation ago, Jakan Khan led his people to defeat Clan Togus, taking a place of power amongst the plains. His son Balakar Khan now leads the clan after murdering his own father during a ritualistic hunt. His father was a man of honor, but Balakar Khan did not inherit his father's patience or wisdom. And while the clans might have the differences, they still share one culture. No matter their strengths or their weaknesses, they are all Maruk. There you go. That's the setup of the centaur and the green dragons within the land. They too are feeling the effects of the primalist attacks. The elements are on the rise. They're connected to Onara, it's showing off concerning omens. And the green dragons, they've been under attack since they returned. The primalist want to gain access to the gateway into the Emerald Dream. Dragons are mighty, but the flight has lost much over the years, like the Aspect Ysera. The skirmishes have ended in stalemates so far, and Marifra hopes that the pack for the centaur still stands, and that their aid can help them turn the tide. The Maruk, too, have been plagued by these primalists. If Onora wills it, I will blow the horn of Dressal on the morrow to signal our accord with the green dragon flight. Marithra, daughter of Isera, is grateful for your... Grateful? Ha! Dragons only respect dragons. No Maruk blood will be spilled for them. You are not the Kanematra, Balakar. A true leader would never surrender this land to outsiders. You desecrate the memory of Maruk Thousand Bones, Serest. Stand down. No. These plains belong to the Maruk, and Marukai belongs to the Nakud! Whereas Clan Shikar refused the offer from Korlev and the Primalist, Clan Nukut has entered a fall allegiance. Now we understand those warnings of Onara. Betrayers are among us, their might unleashed. We want to stand with the green dragons. We want to blow the horn of the soul, to strike an alliance. To empower the horn though, we must commune with Onara and ask for her blessing. Only with her help can we guarantee victory over the Nokuts. We team up with the initiate Boku, who feels a bit insecure about the role as mystic. They're having a hard time communicating with Onara, but it's not exactly their fault. As the primalist, they're torturing the wild god. One more to go. We will succeed. Halt! Get away from... Do not... Is this what passes for a mystic of the Maruk? Oh, Nara! I am sorry. Pathetic. Not just the mystics are being murdered. Clan Terai, guardians of the Horn, have been massacred as well. By second this village, Balakar has betrayed everything that it means to be Maruk. There can be no redemption for him now. But they don't seem too concerned about it. Onara is forced to bless them. Forced to give them the power needed to blow the Horn and call in the dragons. <laughs> onward. The Emerald Gardens will fall! Nearly did we lose another leader of the Green Dragonflight, but Marifra son Solifus, they took the ball from the Dragon Killer Ballista. We got some explaining to do, and thankfully Marifra listens to us with an open heart. There are three clans that are still willing to stand at their side. Terai, Shikar and Onir. United with the dragons, they ride into the field of battle. 
into the gathered forces of the Primalist, who are throwing everything they have to bring down the barrier to enter the ancient Pau. We shut down the portals to prevent the reinforcements. We slay any and all that dare to stand in our way. Even Korolev falls, which is a bit of a shame, as they don't really explain where Korolev came from or her connection to the Primalist. It does appear, if we look at the model, like she carries the scars of the burning of Teldrassil, that perhaps those flames do anything to push her into the path of the elements. Where exactly did all these Primalists and their knowledge come from? Why do they want access into the Emerald Dream? Hopefully stories that will be explained in the future. No, I have failed the dream. Must be ours. For now, the day is saved. The Maruk Centaur and the Green Dragons, they're able to renew their pacts. And by doing so, renew the O-Stone of the Green Dragon Flights. This day, you have proven yourself to the Green Dragon Flight. It is a deed of kindness and sacrifice my people will not soon forget. Against hatred and chaos, the greatest weapon we wield is fellowship. So come, friends. Join me under the ancient bow. From the hunters who value skill above all, a rite of passage, a first. From the mystics who commune with the wind, her lightest touch, a lift. From the descendants of the matriarch, a drop of unbroken progeny, an ancient line, unforgotten. Yes, that makes sense. After their first hunt, a young hunter of our clan receives a ceremonial spear. Take mine. Hello, champion. This spear is proof of your skill. I accept this offering. As all Ohuna are the offspring of Onara, this feather should suffice. Onara's spirit blesses us all. I accept your offering. A bloodline. I have an idea. Here, take this. I remember Tira well. You are so much like her. I accept your offering. I... The Kanamatra Serist. Accept this gift to honor the ancient oath made by our most sacred ancestor. All centaur under Onara's wings will aid the green dragon flight in times of need. And I, Marithra, daughter of Isera, Accept this gift to honor my oath to your ancestor, Tira. Together, dragons and centaur will protect the Onaran Plains. Should the dream be threatened again, know that the Maruk will fight beside you. The bond that united us in ages past has been renewed. Let this oath stone serve as a symbol of our covenant. I vow to protect the Emerald Dream and the Green Dragonflight with my life. Nice little detail for explorers out there that can be found at the gateway into the Emerald Dream. The Night Elves were given a seed at the end of the Shadowlands. This tear was born of sorrow. Now it shall become a vessel of renewal. These souls were saved from the darkness of the moon. Unto them I have offered eternal tranquility in the bowels of Ardenweald. They have chosen instead to become part of a new beginning for their kin.
embodies the cycle of death and life. I offer it to you to run the whisper wind. May it bring your people happiness and peace. On behalf of all the Kaldori, I thank you. Undo Falador. The Winter Queen called her gift a seed. Ysera, my beloved friend, could it truly be so? Yes, I sense this seed is touched by the dream as well as by Ardenweald, a symbol of the crucial balance between life and death. Then it must be kept safe until it can take root. I know of a place it can be protected, but it has been so long. Bring the seed to my daughter. Marithra will know where it should be taken. And it looks like we're not the first ones to come here. This seed is everything. So many beloved souls entrusting their fate, their hopes to us. Are we certain it will be safe? Come. Is this hinting at a future patch or a story in which we party in the Emerald Dream in the domain of life and deal with the seed? Or is something else going on here? Time will tell. With their leader Korolev defeated, the remaining primalists they've scattered, but it still leaves Balakar Khan on the loose and the enslavement of the great ancient eagle spirits. Civil war has spread across the Onaran plains and it's up to us to put a stop to them. In our way, there's Granif, making use of the opportunity to destroy his ancient enemies once and for all. Clan Shikar is on the battlefield with us, helping us on this hunt with their ballistae, stunning the mighty Protodragon, while Clan Nukut will try to sabotage our efforts. After which, we fly on over to the Raging Tempest, as being summoned by Balakar Stormcarvers, not just to devastate the battlefield, but the entire Dragon Isles. Unchecked, Primalist Chaos will reign on the plains, so best to put a stop to it now. Then we meet the honored and legendary spirits of Tira and Maruk. The very same, the founders of the Maruk clan, brought in by Ukel necromancers. Bit of a mistake on their part, thinking that they could control the spirits. And after defeating them, we'll make sure to return the weapons to their proper resting place, so that the spirits can find rest again. Then, all that remains is Balakar Khan himself, relying greatly on the stolen powers of Onara. But let's not forget, Glen Nokut honors power greatly and their leader might be one of the most powerful amongst them. Regardless, the Khan who caused so much trouble is slain, Onara is freed, and peace is brought back to the Onaran Plains. Balakar's weapon will be broken. He will not take a place of honor with the ancestor Khans. My thanks, outsider. Onara now flies free, and without Balakar's influence, Clan Nokud may heal. Now we get to spend our time joining their epic hunts. While the Kirantor, they're in need of our aid to secure the O-Stone of the Blue Dragonflight within the Azure Span. That's gonna be a story for next time though. So for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, see ya!